that's been WFG and the stage for me. Um, and then at the same time, I was a mechanic. Like when I joined, I didn't even like people. I wasn't comfortable with people. I like machines, because they don't talk back to you. They don't complain. And then I went to uh, college, and I was going for digital animation. And that was more machines, more computers. And I was just going to sit there. I can spend, I'm a Scorpio. Anybody a Scorpio on me? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, you guys are weird, right? I can spend time by myself, hours and hours of my, whole day, I, I, I talk to myself, I enjoy myself, right? so sometimes I don't want to, and then to be in a company where now I have to be somewhat of an extrovert, I got to speak on stage, I got to motivate people, I got to meet people, uh, which I didn't even, I was very uncomfortable talking to people and all that stuff, to say that that's what I do for a living now and I'm actually good at it, will give anybody hope, all right, so there's a gift inside of you that you might not even know that you have, that WFG will introduce you to. All right, you don't even know. Some of us, I'm 40 years old, I just turned 40. Um, thank God I started at 24, so I got introduced to my gift at 24 years old, which I'm assuming is a gift because it comes somewhat natural to me. But everybody in here, you have a blessing. You're here for a reason. You just have to connect that and let WFG be the field that you play it on, right? So my first, well, I don't have a mic up here, but my very first talk, it was at a convention, uh, and Sean reminded me of it yesterday. But he said, man, the first time I ever seen you, and it was horrible. Like, it was horrific. <laughs> it was embarrassing. Um, public speaking, by the way, is a phobia to me. That's another thing. How many of you are afraid or nervous when you speak in public? All right. And I see people say that. They get on stage, and you're actually pretty darn good. And I'm like, oh. see, it's a phobia. What's the difference between a fear and a phobia? A phobia is like you start sweating. Your tongue swells up. My heart started pounding but pound so hard that I couldn't even breathe. So when I was talking, I couldn't even get out a whole sentence and my voice would crack and it would just make you uncomfortable just to see me uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> and to say that that's what I do. And so I had a, I had a mic, because um, it was like a lapel mic, and my very first talk, it was Rob Day and his hierarchy, and I held the mic up like this, like I was gonna bust a rhyme. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, there goes the neighborhood, right? <laughs> I know Rob Day was like, oh my God, we got a lot of work to do with this guy. And they did, all right? And I worked on myself, and I'm a product of self-development, and I'm a product of not needing anybody to babysit me. I want to get better. I want to learn. I want to grow. I know I'm not that good right now, and I want to get better. I hate not being good. I hate being uncomfortable. I hated in the first, well, let me tell you my story. I've got ADD too, so you know, I probably would have never been able to sit in the classroom and I mean, no, you don't have to mention if you have ADD. <laughs> but but as, you, as you see people across the stage, you can't, you can't compare yourself to them, all right? That's one thing I want you to get from this event. Don't compare yourself. Compete to get better because competition brings out the best in everybody, but you don't know what people did before they came here that predisposed them for success here. Like, you don't know, right? So me, I'll... <laughs> I did a little rapping before I got here, all right? So I knew what it was like to communicate a message, but I actually had to rhyme words, which gave you a very limited vocabulary to be able to tell a story with. Now that they said you can get on stage and you can say something, but you have the whole vocabulary at your disposal, I was like, well, that's a piece of cake. I can deliver a message doing that very easily, right? So we had done that growing up, but I remember, uh, I, you know, to hear the, the message I say at convention, et cetera, and I'm not, I'm not an anti-JLB job, just, a, just over broke, jail operating as a business, you know, the whole acronym, right? I'm not anti-job, I just believe it's a short-term solution to a long-term problem. I believe it's a band-aid, you know what I mean? I believe it's like a financial pharmaceutical where it doesn't go to the root of the problem, it just manages the symptoms. You know, I'm not against pharmaceuticals, but I'm, I believe you should find out what the issue is and heal yourself, not stay on that for the rest of your life, because that's a, a short-term solution to a long-term problem. So this is the stuff that I've been saying before WFG. I never knew this was going to be a podium or this was going to be a place where I can confess what I believed in. I just knew there was something to it, and it started like seeing my dad. You know, my dad... He's the best man I've ever met. You know, my dad grew up in poverty uh, in the rural south, Tennessee to be exact. 11 brothers and sisters, abject poverty. We say California, we got the richest poor people in the world, just so you know, right? We got iPhones and Androids and color TV and air conditioning, and we're poor, right? No. I mean, pre-civil rights movement, my dad was born in 1938. He said he only had four squares of toilet paper to go use the bathroom. Just think about that. like. And in the South, they eat a lot of food. There's some pretty big people in the South, right? So, <laughs> four 
and four little squares to go use the bathroom, that was poverty, right? Had to drink out of the colored only water fountains, had to go to the, you know, the colored only rest, uh, restrooms, etc. So you were judged by the color of your skin, not by the content of your character, because we got Martin Luther King Day coming up on Monday, you know? Um, and and my, I never heard my dad complain. Never heard him say anything. I'm biracial. My dad moved up to California, so when he raised me, it was a more of a liberal environment. So he, he didn't want me to go through what he went through. So, but I grew up middle class. I never grew up in poverty. Um, but it was more lower to middle class, lower middle class. But the school that I went to was everybody. You know what I mean? That's where everybody came together, and that's where I just got, I went down the wrong track, right? Because uh, those were my friends. And I never seen my dad. My dad would go to work. He would come home. He'd be tired. You know, labor, etc. And my mom would say, "Don't bother him. Just let him sit there, eat his dinner. You know, don't don't complain." Uh, and I just never really had a relationship with my dad. When I was growing up, my dad was born in the in 1938. I was born in 1979. I'm supposed to be a baby boomer, but my parents had me at 42, so I guess I'm Generation X or whatever it is. So there's a generation gap. Okay, my dad's raised in the rural South, old values. He's a traditionalist, a traditionalist generation. They call that the greatest generations of America. Thank God, I didn't realize what I had growing up. That was some of your grandparents. Those values, when you shake somebody's hand and you actually do what you say you're gonna do, yeah. like nobody does today. Yeah. How about this? Yeah, I'll be there on Tuesday night, I'll be there. <coughs> and they don't show up. Like that could not understand how you're telling me you're gonna do something and you don't do it, it makes no sense. Um, back in those days, the divorce rate was not 60%. There was men in our household. We raised our family. There was no daycare, really. There was a woman that stayed at home or whoever, you know, not, not to be, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, feminist or whatever. We, uh, or, yeah, sexist. Um, but there was a woman that would cook and clean, and we didn't have fast food restaurants and all that stuff. It was just a traditional, and that's how I was raised, those old school values, right? And growing up in the city, in California, as a young man, I could not connect with my dad, I couldn't relate to him, and so we grew apart. And so that's when I got turned to the wrong side of the track, so to speak, and uh, I wouldn't change anything for the world, but I learned a lot, because I didn't grow up in poverty, but the answer was always no, because that was my dad's answer when he asked for something. Dad, can I get some shoes? No, you get the pro wings. No, I want the Jordans. No, can I get some lunch money? No, but we'll make you a little peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and you can go to school with a lunch bag. Can I get 